Follow for here to Good Evening. This is BCN's News Bulletin for tonight. Government has plans to introduce new taxes next year that will primarily target visitors and tourists. In 2009, government introduced the new consumption tax that did take locals some time to get used to, but has generated positive returns and put extra money into government's coffers. Premier Talangi believes that these new taxes are necessary to continue with national developments. Some of the green taxes are basically aimed at visitors to the island to try to help them pay for the infrastructure that we have here, pay for the facilities that we provide here as well. It's always been in the pipeline, it's just that we haven't had a chance to, to do them as, as we have. We also need to increase our uh, departure taxes and so on. So, as I said, it's, it's basically aimed at the visitors to help them make a contribution to what they're using while they're here. We're projecting at the present moment perhaps initially not very much, perhaps $100,000, but over the, over the years we're expecting to, to maybe get up to three or four million dollars per year, maybe a bit more than that. If you have a look at what, what's happened with NCT, we started with nothing. We're now earning just on four million dollars from that. Um, and most of that, the bulk of that, is simply because of the number of tourists that are here. If you have a look at, say, the breakdown in the population in terms of what we have, 1,500 people versus, say, six or seven or 8,000 tourists that come, you can, you can see the impact of what NTC has, uh, NCT has done with respect to the amount of money that we have received. So that's a good example of what we can potentially earn. But with these other taxes, we're hoping to get more uh, from the, the visitors who are coming to, to visit anyway. Premier Talangi also said that these taxes are likely to come into e oh. Premier Talangi says that these taxes will become effective in April of next year. Also, with the projected increase in tourist numbers expected and people on the island, Premier Talangi noted that waste management becomes another issue. This was discussed during discussions with Australian government officials and a request was put forward to source funds for the development of a waste management processing facility. We're looking at uh, a facility that will process our waste in whatever form and consolidate it so that we can minimise the use of landfills that we're using at the present moment and reduce the uh, flies and vermin that we have um, and also allow us to recycle some of the um, some of the rubbish that is that is there at the present moment. So we're talking to the Australians. They're looking at providing the funds. We have out asked them to allocate the $2 million that they were, they were to give us um, this year for that purpose, and they have agreed subject to us finalising project proposals and so on. Um, we understand and we have seen uh, copies of a, a feasibility study that was done some time ago, 2010, I think, with the environment, and we're working to use that document to update it and then use that to determine what sort of facilities, how big, what capacity and so on we need to build initially and perhaps expand it at a later time or build it so that in fact we don't have to expand it for the next 50 years or so. Premier Talang said the expectation is that work on this waste management processing facility will begin in the middle of next year. La Kepa residents have had limited water supply over the past two days due to problems with the pump for the village tent. It was a pretty dry weekend with the fire truck making several trips to fill up the village tank while the water t supply division worked overtime to resolve the problem. According to water supply, there was a fault to electrical settings to the main pump and yesterday the pump was replaced and water supply should now be back to normal. This latest problem serves as a reminder for the community to be mindful of water usage and to have some backup systems for water storage. Water staff were mobilised over the weekend to resolve a number of water faults and repairs and this division says that they are pleading with the public to report any water faults or leaks to avoid water wastage, especially during this dry period. A Light for a Life candlelight vigil was held at the Commercial Centre for World AIDS Day in remembrance of the lives affected by HIV and AIDS. HIV continues to be a major global public health concern 
claiming more than 36 million lives so far, and as of 2012, approximately 35.5 million people worldwide are living with HIV. In the Pacific, there are over 29,000 living with HIV, but to date, New York has no reported cases of HIV or AIDS, and organizers reiterated the need to maintain that status. The community gathered for a program organized by the New Health Department with hymns and action songs. And the was HIV campaign champion, Delacy Pamadolisi, was given the honor of lighting the main candle, a symbolic gesture of newest support in the fight against HIV and AIDS. While Acting Health Minister Billy Talangi reflected on the need to continue in the fight against HIV and AIDS, with this year's theme, Getting to Zero, Zero New HIV Infections, Zero Discrimination, Zero AIDS-Related Deaths. Despite the daunting figures of HIV and AIDS infections, organizers announced a positive note that UN AIDS reports through the concerted efforts and campaigns to stop HIV transmission and halt AIDS deaths, there has been a 33% decrease in new HIV infections since 2001. Director of Health Manila Rosa also put out a challenge to youth groups or community groups who would like to host future celebrations. The department was open to any suggestions or proposals. The evening ended with the challenge to continue burning the candle of hope for those directly or indirectly affected by HIV and AIDS. New is Lawn Bowls Green is getting another facelift and this week volunteers and Neskaga officials have been busy trying to complete the project. The crown land at Funwakula, where the Lawn Bowls Green is now situated, was formerly a tennis court up until 2005 when developments for the new green started. New sporting body Neskaga says that it all began because of Nui's desire to compete in the Commonwealth Games in 2006. In order for that to be possible, the requirement was that the island needed to have the Lawn Bowls facility to qualify. It has been a work in progress over the years with some delays, according to Niskaga President Des Hipper. It's taken us a long time for this screen to be ready. So, as you can see, it's, it's starting to shape up like a, a, a proper lawn bow screen now. It's taking a lot of hard work and time and effort put in. Any project like this, in, it's, it requires a lot of uh, money to, to enable the project to... to uh, completed. Whatever little fund that we have, uh, thanks to the uh, generosity of the Commonwealth Games of India and also uh, Scotland, and the fund that they pro provided for development of the athletes and the facility, that is why we are able to uh, build such a, a, a something for, for New Wayne to be proud of. Mr. Hipper says that the project has cost about $40,000. Now that the area is near completion, the hope is that there will be a boost in numbers of people interested in taking up the sport either by leisure or competitively. A rather innovative development has seen the conversion of a reefer container into what will become a storage room and office. We buy this container from New Zealand to store our equipment. Uh, so we decided that, uh, my friend Willie decided that to make it more more attractive, put some uh, uh, design or rock design on it, and put more attractive for for those who come into playing and those who are on the road, walking the road. So we, he he came up with the idea that put some windows there, and, and it looks more like a clubhouse than a storage shed now. And behind it as well, there's a couple of toilets, one for men and one for women. And, uh, we all know that uh, when we use this facility, we need all those. Uh, necessities to work with. In the time being, uh, we are hoping in the future to create a, uh, a building here as well. Mm, our dream has always been a dream to, to create a, a sports and recreation centre in, in this place here. But um, take thing, uh, one thing at a time. Some of the equipment as well as machinery to maintain the lawns was gifted by the New Auckland Lawn Bowls Association. The Lawn Bowls Green will be officially opened on Saturday, marking yet another milestone for the sport on the island. Today marked a milestone for the New Ed Tolomakio Law Association, marking International Day for Persons with Disabilities at the Commercial Centre. 
This is the second year Niue has officially celebrated the day, with many of the speeches reflecting on this year's theme to break barriers, open doors for an inclusive society and development for all. Acting Director for Community Affairs Diamond Tawivi he highlights that the many achievements the department has seen and been able to assist with paving the way forward for those living with disabilities. Some milestones include the development of a disabilities policy, the formation of NTAA, developments within the education sector, ensuring that infrastructure is accessible and other areas that will enable the disabled to break the barriers and open opportunities in an all-inclusive society. As an intermission in between the different guest speakers, youngsters from New Early Childhood Education Centre, the Hiko Dance Troupe and Kaaniwe Boys entertain the crowd in song and dance. But New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mark Wamsky, also spoke highly of the great contributions that persons with disabilities have to offer in any developments within the community. He also stated from observation, the level of understanding and caring of nature of our people makes this a positive environment for people with disabilities to live in. The program also served as a reminder that in order to have an enabling and inclusive environment, there needs to be a recognition of the needs of those with disabilities, and those needs need to be realised across the board. The New Tolomakio Law Association acknowledged the assistance from government and other organisations in making the day a success. And that concludes our news bulletin for this evening. Don't forget to go to New Primary School tomorrow for their end-of-the-year prize-giving ceremony.